What's happening, everybody? This is Pastor Hannah to my online family. I'm excited about the month of February. Why? Because it's our love month. And we're doing a series entitled, check this out, What Kind of Love Is This? If I don't know, I don't know about you, I need clarity. And God's going to give us answers into the relationships and the love that we have for different people. Let's do this thing called what? Life Together in the second month of a new year. Happy February. Let's go. If I've ever needed your prayers, I need your prayers today, all right? Okay, Lord, so this was a tough sermon for me <laughs> at 7.30, but I'm going to do my best. And I ask God to give me the way to execute this sermon so that he can help us. Um, we're going to go into an area that many of us didn't grow up. We didn't grow up in this kind of environment. Um, that we did not see affection. Um, we were not raised in a house that we saw um, hugging and kissing and affection. We knew they were affection because kids kept coming out their bedroom, but. So some going on up in here. But even us, we didn't receive the hugs, the kisses, you know, you know the validation. And so when you don't, if you're not raised around it, how do you get that? And today we want to deal with the definition of eros. And eros is a Greek word that is used to describe romantic love. And romantic is not just getting in the bed. It is romantic love between a man and a woman, though the word itself is not in the Bible. Examples of it are throughout the scriptures. Like it's all in the Bible. And so you have to understand something. We are not of this world. We are so different. And we're, supposed, we're light in the midst of darkness. We're the salt of the earth. So when the world is looking for an example, it's supposed to look in our direction. And he says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and not give you credit, but they're going to glorify God for what they see God doing in you. You got it. So examples of it can be found. You, let's just talk about some. We, we, we see, we first see this love in Genesis. Are you ready? In Genesis 2, the Bible says, the Lord God said, Glory to God. It is not good for man to be by himself. Can every man say, thank you, Jesus? Okay? Now, ladies, I need you to get ready, all right? It says, I will make a helper. Glory to God. Help meet the gas bill, the light bill. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. You are a helper. I will make a helper. I'm going to get the right one that's going to be suitable for him. Because everybody can't put up with him. So I'm going to make sure I get the right one that's going to be suitable for him. And he's going to be suitable for her. Because both of y'all need help. Mm -hmm. So the Lord God cause the man to fall asleep. Fall into, not just sleep. Doggone it, I gotta take you into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, come on brothers, begin to stick your chest out. He took one of the man's ribs. You better watch your mouth, girl, before I take my rib back. And then, hmm, Erica? Hmm? Hmm? And then close up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made woman. Hmm. Come on, woman, thou art loose. Don't forget where you came from. That's all I got to say. Then the Lord, <laughs> then the Lord God made woman from the rib he had taken out of the man. And he brought her presentation, presentation to the man. What did he say? <laughs> Look at here, girl. This is bone of my bone. Mm -hmm. Flesh of my flesh. What you gonna call her? Whoa, man. 
for me? <laughs> and he called her woman, for she was taken out of him. You can't help but love her. You can't help but respect her. Because when you disrespect her, you disrespect yourself. You can't help but love her. You can't help but encourage him. Because if you discourage him, you discourage yourself. Examples of that can be found if you look at um, Abraham and Sarah. Let's talk for a minute. It is a perfect example of long-lasting love. We don't meet him until he's 75. And they've been together for years. They didn't have a baby until he was 100. I'm going to try that now. Listen. We find Jacob and Rachel. What kind of love is that? That is patient love. Because he's willing to go through whatever he got to go through just to get her. Hosea and Gomar. What is that? That's forgiving love. I don't care what you did. I ain't letting you go. Because we're supposed to be together. It got quiet then. God, help me preach this word. Please, Lord, can you please help me? Today we will focus on a love story that we seldom look at. And it is between... Mary and Joseph. I need everybody to get your phones up because you're about to take a picture. I call it the test of love. In 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8, it gives us 16 facts about love. I'm going to put the 16 facts on the screen, and I'm going to need you to take a picture. Are you ready? These are, according to the scripture, these are the 16 facts when it comes to love. Love is patient. Love is kind. You will not be rolling your neck and cussing me out. You're going to be nice to me. It does not envy. I am not jealous of somebody that I am in love with. Neither am I in competition with you. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. I will not dishonor you if I love you. It is not selfish, self-seeking. It's not easily angered. It take a lot for you to take me there. <clears throat> nine it keeps no record of wrong you have no receipts that you could use against them later if you're gonna forgive them you're gonna have to get rid of all the receipts because every time you look at the receipts it take you back to the anger y'all ain't gonna say that to me you got to erase it out of your phone. You got to destroy it. Especially if you're going to stay with them, you got to get rid of all the proof that you got that they ain't right. It keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil. When you get caught, don't act like you all right. It rejoices with truth. When the truth is coming out, you're glad to it. Ready? It always protects always trust always hope it got to get better always persevere love 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 never fails if you study that um there are two is what love is it is seven things what love is not it is four things what love is always it is one thing that says what love never does one that says rejoice and one that says keep out of the out of the 16 we're going to show you four facts that we see in the relationship when it comes to Mary and Joseph. I want to have a very open, honest, transparent conversation with you. This thing has broken me down. I woke up this morning, I told Anna, my eyes have been running. When it's the moment I got up, it's just like my eyes have been running. And it was literally like I was weeping. And I couldn't put my hand on what was going on with me. But as I began to preach this, the Lord began to say to me, this is why your eyes have been running. Because the Lord has been weeping over the love that is in his house. <laughs> um, he is literally weeping because he has given you every example for you to walk in love. He has given you everything that you need to be that. You have allowed the world to tell you what love is. Just because somebody sleep with you does not mean that they love you. Just because I buy you an expensive gift does not mean that I love you. Because I can give you a gift and then slap you at the same time. Mm. So in this Valentine's month, we've just been giving out, you guys got a lot of gifts, so I prepared a love box. And I wanted to show you the love box that we found between Mary and Joseph. And it says, what is it? Love is promising. And I had them to print me out what's called a love contract because my word is my bond. 
What do you mean? You ready? Let's read it. In Matthew 1 and 18, this is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. Here's the line. His mother was pledged. In another translation, it says betrothed. Betrothed to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. The word pledge is also betrothed. Watch me. Betrothed is more serious, more serious than what we call being engaged. You were legally bound to one another and you did not live together. You were legally bound to one another and before you even slept with her, which means that your words were more important than your actions. We out here now. That when you speak something, I need to know that you're going to be a man or a woman of your word. Y'all ain't got to see. Come on, y'all. Please talk. Watch me. Please, please. I'm begging y'all to pray for me today. Watch me. You're going to word. Your promise. The Bible says it's better not to make a vow than to make it and break it. If you tell me that you're going to be committed to me, doggone it, I'm going to need to stand on your word. If you tell me that you're going to stick with me through the thick and the thin, when I get to the thick, don't you abandon me. If you tell me that you got my back, oh my God, you got to make sure that nobody stabbed me in my back. If you tell me that you're going to pray for me, don't just tell me you're going to pray for me to get me, but when I'm going through hell, can I pull on the word that you gave me and make sure your word, 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 your word. And the thing is that we've been around so many people that have not kept their word that it makes you feel like you can't keep your word. But now unto him that is able, oh my God, he's going to help you keep every promise that you made. I'm not just talking to those married people. I'm talking to single people too. Because some of y'all think that this is just for married people. Can I tell you something? You need to take a picture. Bring the 16 things up. You need to bring the 16 bring the 16 you need to take a picture because guess what well, you need to make sure that you have this before somebody even try to step to you because watch me if you lack in these areas this might be why somebody never stepped to you because you're not releasing love but I decree and I declare that a spirit of love is about to fall in this building and what you didn't have you gonna get what you didn't grow up in God's about to re so it is your word. It is your word. It is your word. You cannot lie to the one that you love. You cannot lie. Jesus, watch me. In 1 Corinthians 13 and 7, it says always preserve. The word preserve means to sustain, to uphold, to sustain and to uphold. And I want God to literally get you to the point that he, that he will uphold what comes out of your mouth. If you don't get this, you got to hear me. You'll be running to people, making promises to different people that you'll never be able to to keep. You will have a reputation that's going to slay you. Why? Because you're not a man or you're not a woman of your word. Don't tell me one thing to get me and then once you get me, you don't keep your word to Come on here. The same words you gave me to, to marry me, I need you to live it out when you marry me. Y'all ain't got to say nothing to me. I need you to keep your word. Can you remember? We fit a bag some of y'all into a corner. We fit a bag some of y'all into a corner. I need you to reach around. You got to touch the street and say, you have to keep your word. You have to keep your word. Even when it comes to loving your children, you have to keep your word. Even when it comes to those that you say you love, you have to keep your word. The next thing is the box is love protects it protects it protects what do you mean because Joseph her husband was faithful in the law here's the line yet did not want to expose her on Instagram on Facebook on Snapchat did not want to expose her to public disgrace. What did he do? He had in his mind to divorce her quietly. He's showing loving kindness that he's going to do something privately and quietly. He preserved, he watch me, he's not just looking out for his reputation, but he's covering her name. I beg you, you better cover me. You better protect protect me. You better protect my name. Even when you talking to your BFF, you can't tell them everything because you assigned a 
cover me. Y'all ain't saying enough to me up in here today. You got to get the right one that could cover you. What do you mean? Cover my name. Cover my reputation. Cover my character. You got to make sure that you don't have these conversations that's going to kill me. Now I need you to pay attention because some of y'all need you to make sure that you're not dating someone that's holding a twin size sheet because a twin size can never fit on a king size. You got to find somebody that got the right material that when you need to be stretched, they're going to do what it take to cover you. I wish you even had some friends that love you enough to cover you. I wish you even had a praise partner sitting next to you that had enough to cover you. I cover your name. I cover your year. I cover your reputation. I cover your future. I cover your business. I cover your career. I cover your children. I cover your family. I cover you when you go out of the house. I cover you when you come in the house. I cover you when you go to work. I come against every witch in every warlock that you got to work with. I cover your mind. I cover your heart. I cover your spirit to make sure that the enemy don't come against you. I cover you. I cover you. I cover you. Can you please make sure you sit next to somebody who want to I even cover you when you in worship. I cover you that the enemy don't rob you while you sitting in the building. Can you do me a favor? Can you make sure you're around three people that got some covering? Look at your name and say I cover you. I I cover you, 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 I cover you. If I love you, I cover you. If I love you, I cover you. If I, I'm, but I'm not going to be covering up no lie. Shut your face. You better cover him. You better cover her because it's still going to be your children mother. That's still going to be your children father. You, you're not leaving them. You might as well go ahead and cover them. You, so let, let's talk, let's talk, let's talk, let's talk. So what do you mean by cover? What do you mean by cover? You got to get me ready. So let's just talk cover. You protect, you protect. You're assigned to protect. You're assigned to protect. You're assigned to protect. But they wrong, they wrong. Can I tell you something? Well, let, let me give you an example of love covering. For example, when Noah, the man of God who built an ark, the man of God who got used to build an ark, the man of God who got used to protect his family, the man of God who built and preached. But then when the, when, you know, when the, when the ground dried up, watch me, and, and, and he he got out his line. We find out, now we find out his weakness. We find his weakness. What was his weakness? He had, first thing he did after he built an altar, he planted some grapes. And he went in there and he smashed some grapes. Because I need a drink. I've been locked up in this darn ark with all these animals and everybody. I've had no privacy, the pressure and all this stuff. I need a strong drink. And he smashed a little bit harder. He smashed to the point that he got drunk. He was so drunk that he blacked out. But I thought he was a man of God. He is. He is. But this is his thorn in his flesh. Y'all ain't going to say to me. And see what I don't like about some of y'all, you want to sit here and act like you don't have a thorn in your flesh. You want to sit here and act like you're perfect. But sooner or later, the truth is going to be told. The moment that you get out of this season, watch me. And so he's in his tent. He's in his tent. I need your revelation. I need you to look at me. He's in his tent. He's having a private drink. Watch me. He doesn't invite anybody else in. He doesn't have an open bar. This is not happy hour. This is his private business. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me. He is in there and he falls out and he's butt naked. Watch me. One of his sons goes in and pulled the covers back so he could see where his father was shortcoming at. He sees his father in there butt naked and then run around and start telling about daddy in there naked. Daddy in there naked. If you love me, you don't seek to kill my reputation. Y'all ain't gotta say nothing to me. Even if you sow it, some things you got to keep to yourself. Mm -hmm. Watch me. So he ran up on the two brothers who really loved their father. And the Bible said, you ready? That they literally put the covers on their shoulders and they walked backwards and they covered, watch me, and they covered his nakedness because they never wanted to see him like that. And I'm saying to some of you all, some things God let you see to show you the area that you got to pray for. Ah, God lets you see it to show you the area that you're going to have to be strong for them for. And I came to tell you that when you love somebody, you 
cover them. You cover them. I am watching people go live. I am watching you do posts. I am watching you spread the negativity and you wondering why you curse. Because mm. me, watch me, watch me. When he got up out of his sleep and when he heard what his son had did to him by exposing his business, he cursed him. But the two that covered him, he blessed them. And I came to tell somebody, you got a blessing coming. I'm trying to set you up for your next blessing. I've been telling you to touch your neighbor, say I cover you, because when you tell you cover them, you get a rebound of a blessing. God's going to make sure that you're going to have an amazing year. And don't just say it to be saying it. Like, I need you to say it like you know they're not perfect. I need you to say it like you know they got a weakness. I need you to say it like you know they got a fault or a shortcoming. Reach around you and to three people say, I cover you. I cover you. I cover you. I cover you, I cover you. I cover you, I cover you, I cover you, I cover you. My Anna Hannah, I cover you. I know you got me covered. I cover you, I protect you. I protect you. I protect you. I protect you. Husbands, let me help you out. Your wives are very protective. Because, watch me, and it's, it's something that God put in them. They wish. I got some kids in here. I can't say what I want to say. It start with an H and it end with an E. I wish I would try to step to you. That devil is a liar. And some of these women, they discernment is on 10. See, you looking at all, oh, she don't want me. Uh-uh, boo. I see that spirit. I can spot that thing a mile away. How can she spot it? Because she used to be that. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me? And I know a whole, I mean, I know it. Love promises, love protects. Love promises and keeps the promise, and love protects. Love is patient. Love will wait on you to evolve. Love will wait on you to grow up. Love will wait on you to become the mature person that I know you're going to be. And I'm not going to sow years into you and let somebody else reap my grapes. I don't mind waiting. Love is patient. I need, I need to show you something. You ready? When Joseph woke up, he did, I need every woman to hear this. He did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him. Mary couldn't talk him into doing what he needed to do. She had to let God deal with him. You can't change a grown man. <laughs> Your nagging won't change him. But you got to tell God why he sleep. Get this book. Get him, I mean, and get him good too. When he wake up, I need him to be everything you called him to be. Y'all ain't, y'all, I need, I need somebody to know that it's out of your hands. You can't control it. You used to being a control freak, but God will put you in a situation that you can't run it and you can't control it. That you got to step back and throw your hands up and say, God, if you don't do it, it won't be done. I remove myself from the situation, even when it comes to your kids. Kids. You cannot control grown kids. You cannot tell them how to live. You got to tell God, get them, and you got to. Wait on it. Wait on it. 
Wait on it. Wait on it. Do you hear me? To the one that seemed to be just a little stubborn, let God deal with him. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm picking up a, a, a nagging spirit right now. I keep trying to tell him. 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 Ain't that what I said? Ain't that what I said? I tried to tell you the trifling behind. Shut your face. Shut your face and let your spirit travail. Shut your face and let God. How come, how, how come, how come the woman out there loose ain't saying nothing now? Why you sitting there now with your lips poked out? You got your lips poked out. Oh, God. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Okay, okay, okay. Um, um, here's a line that messed me up. Verse 25. But he did not consummate their marriage until she delivered what God had given her. I don't want to mess up what you're carrying, girl, because I'm a sign to wait to see you produce what God put in you. Single women, I need your attention. Make sure that you don't marry somebody who's envious of what you have not even delivered yet. You got ministry in you, but you got to make sure that you marry somebody who going to celebrate what God's about to deliver out of you. Oh, my God. Watch me. And he waited. And he waited until she delivered. You got to hear me. If you wait, I promise you. It's going to get better. I promise you. Me and Anna Hannah did our, my live devotion last night. And we looked at, bring the list back up, bring the list back up. We looked at the list and we asked the question, out of the list, which was the hardest for you to release in the department of love? See, we're so busy trying to receive that it's hard for us to even release. The same way that you expect somebody to give you 16, you're supposed to give 16 too. So but you got to have an honest conversation with yourself. When you look at this list, you say, now what's the area that I know that I struggle in? Anna Pitt said she struggled with the patient because guess what? She wanted a certain kind of husband that I wasn't providing for her. I was not home like I should be home. I was so busy doing ministry that I was not there. And I would come home sometime and I could sense the frustration. I could put the door, the key in the door, but like, oh, it's about to be a fight up in here tonight. <laughs> I could pick up this conflict. I mean, one time, watch me, I mean, one time, I had gone out of town, I had been evangelizing, and I flew back, and I was like, oh my God, I can't wait to see my wife. I put that key in that door, and it was like... <laughs> we ended up having a bad argument, and then well, she came in the room later, and she said, John, what I'm really trying to say is I missed you. He ain't go, well, you didn't just say that. I mean, uh. <laughs> but her, her lack of patience, ready? The, we good, we, we good, we good. Cause guess what? When I was absent then, I'm present now. <laughs> Because where I might have been gone then, I'm home more now than I've ever been. Well, but she had, she waited on the right timing. And she, t watch me, she said something to me. She said something one time. She said, John, I was in prayer and the Lord told me to do something with you. I said, what did he say, Anna? You know, I like to hear what the Lord tell you when it come to me. She said, the Lord told me to nail you to the cross. I said, God, dog, that sounds like a crucifixion, don't it? I got to feel the nails. So she said, no, what I'm saying is, God told me to leave you alone. That you are in his hands and not mine. And I'm going to wait on God to do what he want to do. Because I am patient enough to see you become the present husband that you're going to be one day. I'm I am patient enough to see you actually reap from your labor what you've been working on for years. You're going to get to a land called plenty and you're not going to have to work as hard as you used to work, Jonah. But you got to wait. 
you got to wait on it. So then she says, she says well, what, which was the one that you struggled with? I honestly had to look at these and I had to admit number seven, self-seeking. Because if she complained, I was so busy. Oh, you ain't going to stop the move of God in my life. You ain't going to stop God from doing what he want to do in my life. Come on, bro. You know how you get, you know how you get to talk to her. Look at here. 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 You know what you're married when you're married. I wasn't no nine to five man when you married me. And I ain't going to be no nine to five man when you get me. Huh? You see what I'm saying? I was gone before I got you. And I'm going to be gone when you're here. See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? I ain't adjusting. I'm just self-seeking. I'm so selfish. I'm so selfish. And watch me. In church, it's easy to be selfish and blame it on God. Because you say, I'm so busy doing ministry. But what you don't know is that your first ministry started in your house. Y'all ain't saying that to me. You want to lay hands on everybody else, but you haven't laid hands on your own spouse. You haven't laid hands on your own children. You have not walked through the house and pleaded the blood in your own situation. But you want to come here and be Superman or Superwoman. Don't just wear your cape in here. The true proof of your cape is what you do in your house. Y'all ain't going to say that to me. I was self-seeking. I was self-seeking. I was self-seeking. And, and me, we got to be careful that we're not so prideful that we can't hear what they really saying. Uh, it, took a, it took a long time for me because as long as I was self-seeking, I then began to feel a gap coming in my house. We out here now. I felt myself not being as close to my wife that I needed to feel. Just because you're in the house don't mean you're close. Just because we sleep together don't mean we connected. Y'all not going to say that to me. I'm good. I'm good. I'm in another place in God right now. I'm in another place in God right now. And I felt the gap coming. I felt the gap. Watch me. Watch me. And the gap didn't happen overnight. The gap didn't happen overnight. It took years to moonwalk from each other. We literally began, watch me, because she was in school, she was doing work. I'm so busy doing ministry. I, we opened the church. I'm preaching four times. I'm running to the office. I'm doing this, and I felt the gap. So now I got to close the gap. I have to close the gap. So I intentionally, and here's the line I want some of y'all to get. Just because you feel it don't mean it's your reality. Oh, God, please help me to preach this. Please help me to preach this. So what I did was when I began to fill that gap, I intentionally would leave after preaching four services. I would be dog tired. I would go home and say, Anna, get dressed. We're going to dinner. She says, no. She's like, no, we ain't going to go. We ain't going to go. I know you're tired. Sometimes I get, okay, okay then. <laughs> but I get up the next Sunday, Anna. Let's go to dinner. And the Holy Ghost told her, every time he asks you to go, I need you to submit to the process. Y'all not saying nothing to me? Not, I could have been like, I'm trying to take you out to dinner, and now you ain't knowing me. See what I'm saying? I'm trying to be the man that you want me to be. See what I'm saying? And you trying to say this? Shut your face. Shut your face, bro. Let God deal with her. You just keep doing what you're supposed to do. And I kept extending it, and I kept extending it. Then I would have to get up and leave the office. I would have to go home. I had to sit in the den. I had to watch TV. My wife would watch HGTV for 12 hours. I would sit there and watch HGTV for hours. Now we're watching the repeats. It's okay, because watch me. While I'm watching, I'm closing. While I'm sitting, I'm shutting the devil down because the enemy looks for a gap to slide in. Watch me, you gotta get me, you gotta get me right. And watch me, and the enemy will come in with a third party that will offer you what only your spouse is supposed to give you. But because your your spouse took off the apron, okay, watch me, somebody else came in with an apron, which you don't realize it's a paper apron which means that it would not endure the test nor the trial. It'll only meet your need for a season because the assignment is to tear your whole house up. Y'all ain't got to say nothing to me. Watch you Look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. It's on assignment to come after your future, to come after your children, to come after your promise. It wants to rip your contract up. It wants to take the, what you cover people with. It wants to put a sheet on a bed that you should never be sleeping in. And now you in here playing the eyes of brother in between the sheet. You better wrap yourself in your press sheet and bind the enemy on every hand. You have to realize you got to close the gap. Close it, close it, close it. Watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me. 
And I begin to say, watch me. Then my, my, my spirit, my heart begin to feel closer because I need, I need to be close to you so that you could pick up on me. I need to be close to you so that I could pick up on you. It, it, look at me. It is normal to have a gap season. Watch me, watch me, because the gap is only going to make your marriage stronger and only the strong survive. You cannot let the devil tell you that I don't love you anymore. Shut your face. What, what, what made you stop loving them? What made you stop loving them? Look at the, take your phone out, spirits. Take a picture of the 16. Watch me, and stop telling me, say, he ain't this, she ain't that. No, where are you? What are you not? What are you lacking? What do you need God to help you in? Oh, we, oh, we. Because if you keep waiting, if you just keep waiting, just keep waiting, just keep waiting. Well, they're not meeting my need sexually. Mm. <laughs> I heard a song. The freaks come out at night. Which means the older you get, you just might get a little bit more freaky. I'll wait. All my fantasies are with you. So I got to ask God to let you fulfill the fantasies. Because anything outside this house is not a fantasy, it's a nightmare. <laughs> I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait. You ready? I need your attention. I need your attention. Tuesday we celebrate, don't clap, I want to make sure I don't lose my thought. Tuesday we celebrated 31 years of being married. Stop, I said don't clap, be obedient. Look at them spirits. <laughs> look, 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 31 years, ready? I thought I was doing something. I thought I was doing something, for 20 some years, we go on vacation every November. 20 some years, we go to, on vacation. In the last, what, 10 years or 12, we've been going by ourselves, no, maybe longer than that. Long, by 15 years, we go alone. We start, first started with a group, and now we go alone, because it's our time. I mean, we go going places I never thought I would go. We went to Greece. We went to Italy. We went to Barcelona. We took the train, went to another part of Spain. I mean, I'm doing things. I'm from the, I'm from the west side. I'm from the projects. What you doing in Greece? What you doing in Barcelona? I thought I was doing something. I'm at home two weeks ago. Anna's off for the whole week of our anniversary. And the Holy Ghost tell me, clear your calendar. Go on the trip. Leave for three nights. I looked at Anna and say, you want to get away? That book is set up, get away, go where? Because <laughs> I never met love like this before. I've been with you 31 years. And we've never gone anywhere all of a sudden like that. I said, let's just go somewhere where it's hot. Let's go someplace where the sun is. Let's just go someplace and let's just get away from everybody. Let's just go someplace and let's just sit out and just rest. She says, let's do it. Watch me, watch me. But what if she, watch me, watch me. She had been complaining, but in my self-seeking, I wasn't listening. I wasn't listening. My pride wouldn't let me hear. Because I thought, but November was enough. November was enough. But she said, John, I'm tired. I'm going to work. I'm coming home frustrated. I just need a break. I just need to get away. But I couldn't hear it because I'm still lifting in my prayer. Because, girl, I took you to Italy. I took you to Spain. You ain't never been to Spain until you met a brother like me. See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? I got you, I got you behind sitting in first class. Look at you laying down in the seat. You're sleeping. You're, getting, you're eating first class. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? And now you're talking about that you want to go somewhere else. You done lost your mind. How much that's going to cost? How much that's going to cost? Shut up. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Now let me show you how good God is. Listen to me. Because I opened myself up to something new. 
Something fresh. I went on my Southwest Airline app and I looked at how many points, because I've been flying for years. <laughs> I had close to a million points, which means I get the plane tickets free. Shut up. There's certain things that God will keep hidden from you until you open up to him. And now you can get the benefits of what you've been... I need you to do me a favor. I just need to prophesy for a few minutes. Can you reach around and touch me and say, all expenses paid in full. All expenses paid in full. He's about to enlarge your territory. You're about to go places that you've never been before. They that wait on the Lord, you waited and he's about to blow your mind. I've never seen the righteous forsaken So we go, we go, we go to, we go, I need you to hear me. We go someplace, and I had seen uh, someone I know at a resort. I say, send me the name of the resort. I sent it to my assistant. We booked it. We get there to the room. I, I want to, can I, bring the camera. Public service announcement. I'm from the projects. I was raised in poverty. I've never been where I'm going. We get there, we open the room, the key to the room, and it's a full bedroom, and they say you can decide where you want to sleep. You can either sleep away from the window, but if you want to wake up with the sun shining, you can sleep right at the window. You go into this huge shower. It's three shower heads. You open a door and your tub is outside. You go out on the balcony, you have your own pool. I'm from the west side, y'all. They have a hammock. I've never been in a hammock a day in my life. They've always scared me. <laughs> Anna said, I'll be back. I said, okay. I ran out there because I didn't want to see me fall getting in the hammock. <laughs> I get in the hammock. By the time she come back, I'm swinging. The swing slowed down. I told Anna, grab my hand. Push me. How you get here? I waited. I waited until God made it the right time. She could have given up on me, but your ladder is about to be greater. Those of you that believe that he's a God, I'm not just talking to married people, some of you single people. He's about to give you, he's about to exceed your expectation. Those of you all that know he's a promise keeper, get on your feet and release a praise. Yay! Everybody in the building that no eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, what God has in store for you, single, married, divorced, widowed, release of praise right here. Oh. love is patient love is patient love is patient
and I'm watching the enemy tear relationships up because you're not willing to wait on them to evolve or to come to their senses. I would rather wait in his will than get what I want outside of his will. And I, I, I just need your attention. You could, can everybody just stand for a minute? Um, I didn't know this. I was not taught to love. I just need your attention. I wasn't, I wasn't taught. I just thought that a man just make the money. I didn't, I didn't know about affection. I didn't, I was not raised in an affection. Of course my mother loved on me, but I didn't see how a husband is supposed to treat their wife. I literally walked out of the house and Anna called me and was like, John, how do you just leave the house and not say bye? You heard it all open, didn't you? <laughs> You're so stupid, John. You're so stupid. <laughs> I didn't know. We, 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 we on vacation one time, we walked down the street and she just grabbed my hand. I was like, what's wrong? You all right? She said, like, John, nothing wrong. I just want to hold your hand. I'm like, okay, then. I didn't know. I didn't know. Which means that you can abort what God brought together because you're not open to being taught. I want to show you something because when it's all, if you, if you, if you stay in this wheel, you're going to produce. No, no, no. If you, if you, if you, if you, if you stay in his will, if you be patient, I am telling you that he's going to blow your mind. I need you to prophesy, tell two people, I see increase. I see. I want to go in the spirit right there. If I could just get, I need some of y'all. Would you speak is going to be your reality. I need, I need you to, let's see y'all, please get spiritual with me. I need, I don't care if you're single or you're married. I see increase. Can you do me a favor? Can you reach around you? Literally shake three hands and say, you are about to produce. I see increase. Your business is about to blow up. attention please your blessings are going to be so big we won't even be able to name them all <laughs> yeah everybody that somebody left you because they didn't love you the way that you needed to be loved I need you to release a praise like your next is about to be better and greater don't play with me don't play with me So let me just show you some scripture that I, I've read it, but I never really paid attention to it. And I, like when, when Jesus was doing ministry in his hometown, the, the city got the, the city, his hometown began to speak. They say, isn't this the carpenter's son? Talking about Joseph. This Joseph's boy. Then they say, isn't his mother named Mary? Here's the line I want you to get. And aren't his brothers. So after Mary delivered Jesus, that darn Joseph started producing. Do you hear me? Now, I want you to pay attention. I want you to pay attention. Because it's an increase that we can't count. It says, now I'm his brother, his brother, what's their name? James, Joseph, Simon, Judas. That's all I used to read. I never paid attention to the rest of the scripture. It says, aren't, it's so many of them, we can't name them. That Mary never saw her feet again. Erica, can I tell you something? 
look at this. I want everybody to look at this. We have preached and taught that when Mary was at the cross, where is Joseph? We don't hear about Joseph anymore until, watch me, until they go and get him when he's 12 years old. We don't hear about Joseph anymore. We just assume that Joseph died. Joseph ain't dead. Joseph at home taking care of the rest of them kids. <laughs> Mary, you going on down to the cross. God gave you that, and I need you to watch it from the cradle to the grave. But I'm on assignment to make sure that the whole house is still covered. I came to say to some of you all, I want you, I want you to look at me. I want you to see this because you look at us now, you be like, oh my God, you've made it, you've made it, you've made it. No, we didn't get here overnight. We didn't get here overnight. When we first got married, come here, Anna. Come here, girl. this. When we first got married, Anna was in college. We moved from the west side. We both lived in Oak Park. We, our first apartment was in High Park. We lived in a one-bedroom apartment that it was no space. It wasn't. It was one bathroom. Now, you know that's the devil. <laughs> that thing right there. But it's where we had some of our biggest fights, some of our biggest arguments, some of our biggest misunderstandings, but we stayed together. And then one day we came home and a realtor says, I think I found a condo in High Park that you might be interested in. And we ended up buying a condo that was three bedrooms and two baths. So God began to give us more space. You ready? Now Anna has graduated and I was patient enough to watch her deliver and get her degree. She was patient enough to watch me go from servitude to being an, uh, an anointed pastor. We move it, huh? And in advances, I'm traveling the world. I wasn't traveling when we met. So she's beginning to see increase. Watch me. Then we go, I'm at home one day and they, the Holy Ghost told me, it's time to go, it's time to go. And I go and I found a three bedroom I'm sorry, a five-bedroom condo with 3,000 square feet, two fireplaces, and two private decks. And it was so high, I walked out and said, uh, uh. I felt like I was on Cribs on MTV. Wow, wow. And he gave it to us. But what if we had given up in year seven? What if we had given up in year five? Then the enemy would have consumed what God wanted to do. But because we stayed together, because we stayed together, we end up building a house. We built a house that was amazing. You ready? With this basement that had a steam room in it with surround sound and the speakers, all the curtains were custom made. Dennis, our interior designers in the building, we picked out the towel, we laid the house out, and me and Anna looking like, can you believe what God is doing for us? Watch me, and I wish I would let somebody else get the other end of this. Cause we've, come on, leap, leap, leap. Stop shaking, leap woman, leap, leap, leap. There you go. And then the real estate market crashed. And the Lord said, now it's time for you to go find your next. So then we went from a 3,000 to our home now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then he did some other things for us that we're not going to even discuss. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Question. Who do you trust to hold the other end? Because some people want to come in at this level and now try to grab the other end, but they didn't go through the process to get what you have. And he's not done with us. He's not. We're on vacation saying, let, what are our 60s going to look like? Let's set some goals for our 60s. 
Because my partner's not going to change. Because we're going to live a long, healthy, anointed, prosperous life. You, that's you pulling. I'm not pulling. That's you. And there's some revelation in that. Because sometimes the other spouse can pull because you stop believing. And thank God you got somebody that keep pulling on your potential. I need, I, need, I, need, I need to go. Now I need your attention. And I know you're tired of standing. I was standing longer than you. But listen. <laughs> now I really need your attention for real. How did, how did I become this way? I didn't know love. I didn't know how to love this woman. I didn't know how to celebrate her or appreciate her. All I knew is just, just be a provider. You good, just provide. No, no. I didn't even know how to receive love. I didn't even know how to ask her for what I needed. I had to admit I am absent, I am not here. Because he won't bless fake. And he won't exalt pride. I am in this church. I'm, I'm, we can let this, don't let it go because it might tear my hand off. Thank you. I want you to hear me. I need your attention. I know us. I know us. I counsel you. I feel you. I love you. And I come to tell you the enemy's coming after us. He's coming after our family structure. He's coming after marriages. He's trying to make you not even believe in marriage. You've heard so many horror stories that you don't even want to be married. And the worst thing in the world is for you to say, it's an insult to God, is I don't want to marry a person in church. What, what, where do you want to go to the bar? Where do you want to go? Where do you want to meet him at? Strip club? Where do you want to meet him? Where do you want to meet him? Tell me where you want to meet him at. I prayed. You heard me? He brought her to church. She walked across the altar the first time she came. I said, oh, look at God. Whoa, man. Look at me, look at me, look at me. I'm watching you all not believe in love. I'm watching you all not trust. I'm watching you all um, be lifted in pride. I'm good, I'm good. No, you're not good. How do you get better? How do you get better? You got to hear me because some of y'all think you're good and you're not. Watch me. And I know religious people. Look at me. We want to shout. You want to speak in tongues. You are evil. You're not nice. You're not nice. You are lifted in pride. You look down on people and think that you're better than somebody. You're not nice. But you can speak in tongues. You got a title. You, 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 you got, you're an elder. You're a prophet. You're an apostle. Listen to me. I've been in the room with them. And I've heard all the horror stories that they tell about marriage. Look at me. And I didn't believe it. This is the only reason I, I made this woman wait on me for three years. I dated her for three. It shouldn't have taken me that long. You know what had me arrested? Fear. Because I didn't want to be what I saw. I did not want to be one of these preachers that do all of this power, but there's no power in your house. I did not want to do all this teaching, but then I'm at home sleeping with the enemy. I don't want to live like that. So get me right. Get me right. Get me right. Get me right. Everybody lift your hands and say, God, get me right. Get me. How do you get right? Look at the screen. Bring the scripture up in 1 John. Bring the scripture, last scripture up. He says, dear friends, dear friends, let us love, 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 love one another. For love, love comes where? It comes from God. You can't love the other person until you get to God and let God put love in you. You got to hear me loud and clear. Everyone who loves 
has been born of God. And guess what? You know God. Why? Because you know that this is not who you used to be. You didn't grow up like this. You were not raised around this. This is what God put in. Whoever does not love, whoever does not love, whoever does not love, whoever does not love, does not know God. You know religion, you know church, but you really don't know God. You know how to move through the system, but real talk, you don't know God. Why? Because God is love. Look at me. Look at me. You know what I pray some days? Tamika, don't ever let me hurt this woman. Don't ever let me disappoint this woman. Don't ever let me abandon my assignment. Because if I love my house, I can love your church. Don't ever let me hurt your people. Don't ever let me disappoint your people. Make me the leader that you want me to be. Help me to love the unlovable. Help me to reach for the unreachable. Help me to be patient with those that you're patient with. Because I don't want to cause an abortion in your church. Help me, 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 help my attitude, help my speech, help me not be harsh in my answers, help me to love those. Come on, some of y'all need to pray. I need you to hear me. I need hold, hold the music, hold the music. There is a mean spirit in the body of Christ. There is a mean spirit. <laughs> There's a mean spirit among the children of God. This thing is spiritual because you won't let God teach you how to love. For some of you singles, you are on hold until you open yourself up to love. You will have more night, more night stands than you can imagine. You'll sleep with somebody but still not be satisfied because you have not opened yourself up to love. You've only been open to lust. You have to understand Understand me and hear me. Randada Basaya, Randada Basaya. Teach me, teach me, teach me, teach me, teach me. Grab your neighbor by the hand. You have without excuse. It's not by accident that you at a church that me and Pastor Glenn both can testify about divorce. He was divorced. Anna was divorced. And Eric and I were the ones that were single, waiting and believing. And who would think that God would send us what somebody else thought was trash? Oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm a trash collector. Oh, Because there's some treasures in the trash. And some of y'all, the enemy want to make you think that you are damaged goods. But oh, he said, if you just learn how to love him, he going to send somebody that's going to love you the way you need to be loved. Urandara Messiah, squeeze that hand and say, God's coming, God is coming. God is coming. God is coming. God, come on, y'all. You holding the hand of somebody that's weak, that don't believe anymore. You holding the hand of somebody, hey, 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 hey. If you've ever been hurt before, can you squeeze the hand you're holding? If you got to squeeze, can you open your mouth and holler, help! Do me a favor, can you just begin to pray for the hand you're holding? Give me just one minute of you praying as I wait on instructions from the Holy Spirit. Close the gaps. Close the gaps. Release all 16 in this building. Love perseveres. Can you put a drive in this building?
that we've never seen before. Can you put a chase in us that we chase you so we could know how to do what we need to do? Every woman, open your mouth. Every man, open your mouth. Don't clap. Let that hand go and lift your hands to the Lord. Lift your hands to the Lord. Close your eyes, please, please, please. Can you just tell the Lord, I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. Can you please, can you please, can you please? Every man, pray, I'm open. Every woman, pray, I'm open. Teach me. Teach me. No, no. Teach me. Teach me to keep a promise. Teach me to protect. Teach me how to be patient. And teach me how to produce for your glory. For your glory, I'll do anything. Come on, Jabari, let me hear that. For your glory, I'll do anything. For your glory, I'll do anything. For you, I'll love who you tell me to love. I'll wait on who you tell me to wait on. I'll be patient with who you tell me to be patient with. For your glory, just for a few minutes. For your glory, I will do. Just to see It's 11, 07, come on. To be home, For your glory. For your glory. Oh, I will do anything. Just to see. Just to see. I need to move on, but it's 11.08. Did somebody say, I really need, I, I need a moment on the altar. The enemy's in my house, the enemy's in my marriage, the enemy's in me, the enemy's in my mind and my spirit. And I need God to help me heal. Nobody walk out the building. If you know you need that moment on the altar, I'll open the altar up to you for just a few minutes. Get out of your seat and come now. Get out of your seat and come now. I'll open the altar up to you. I'll open the altar up to you. Move, 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 move. Get out my seat. There's somebody, you, you're, 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 you're at your peak when it comes to frustration. I need you to get out of your seat. And I need you to get up here. You can stand, you can kneel, it's on you. There's somebody, the enemy coming after your house. Coming after your marriage. There's somebody single, you just shut the door. And the Lord said, I'm waiting on you. Let's just have an open, honest, transparent moment. Let's not fake for anybody. Everybody say, for your glory. I will do anything. Just to see. I want to be 
Lift your hands and say, Wanna be where you are. Shift me. Gotta be where you are. Wanna be? Wanna be where you are. Gotta be. Come on, lift your hands. God, I take you there. I want to be. Gotta be. Help me, God. Lift your hands and say, I gotta be. Come on, lift your hands again. Say, I want to be. Everybody that's married. You cannot do this without God. Gotta be. One more time. Wanna be? Worship God while you worship. Tell Him, make me over. Can every man begin to pray? Make me over. Make me the husband. Make me the man. Make me the brother, the uncle, the nephew, the grandson. The can every woman open your mouth and pray? Make me the woman that you want me to be. Make me the wife. Make me the mother. Make me the aunt. Make me the sister. Make me the friend that you want me to be. I want to love the way you love. I want to receive love. I want to give love. I want to be lost in love. Wow. On your way back to your seat, I just need you to hug through and say, your ladder will be greater. No one leave out the building. I, I got 17 minutes. I got 17 minutes. Make me over again. Make me over again. No one leave out the building. Make me over again. I want to be more like you, Jesus. Make me over again. You are the part of Make me. Love. Make me over again. I am the clay. Make me. Make me over again. Lord, I want to be more like you. Make me over again. Let me do what I have to do while you, they're going back to the seats. Could everyone just stand? This is the last time I have you to stand. You'll sit down. From this, but everyone stand. There are 13 people in this building. There are 13 of you that God literally said, you cannot do it without me. And I brought you here today with your broken spirit, with your disappointed heart, to get you ready for what I have for you to be next. I stand at the door and I knock. If you hear me, while I'm preaching, it's like, man, this man talking to me. That is me knocking on the door of your heart. 
if you know that I am talking to you and you're open to God mending the broken heart back together and submitting to him get out of your seat and meet me on the altar there are 13 of you that's supposed to be up here who am I waiting on Get out of your seat. Here we go. They're going to make me fight. Here we go. There's one. Intercessor, start praying. I got you, my sister. He's about to wipe your tears away. Come on, come on here. This might be your last time to cry like this. Get on day, Saya. One, two, three. Thirteen of y'all supposed to be up here. There are thirteen of you all. Shaya. Anybody else? All right. Yeda masa ya masanda do bo seki anda da bo sa ya masanda. Boranda da masi anda do bo se anda da. Everybody saying, there's somebody in the building. Hold the music. You are living under a spirit of condemnation. That you did something wrong and the enemy keeps holding it over your head. That you feel as if you that you don't even deserve love. But the Lord told me to tell you he's about to clear the board. Everything is about to be erased. And he's about to give you a fresh start. If you know I'm talking to you, I'll count to 10. And you get up here. 10, move. 9, 8, 7, 6. Every chain will be broken. Yay! Ha! We shut the mouth of the enemy. For he's an accuser. Yay! I hear somebody keep saying, but I messed up. And he told me to tell you, he know you messed up. But he's still about to give you a fresh start. Five. Four. If you don't believe me, I'm going to let you hear the praise of some people that messed up before. But God gave them another chance. Do you hear that? Same God. Same God. Same God. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Ministers, get behind them. Yay! Ministers, come behind them. Let's go. Somebody, you just got snatched out of hell. The enemy had planned your death. But God, hold my shape, got you in the building. Your funeral just got canceled. You had planned your suicide. But God just calls an intervention. You shall live. I cancel your suicide. Cancel 
cancel your suicide. I cancel your suicide. Come on, we're about to pray. about to pray. Everybody on the altar, I need you to repeat after me. He just gave me another chance. Everybody on the altar, open your mouth and shout, He just gave me another chance. The devil wanted you dead. All right, let's pray. Let's pray. Just repeat after me. Would you, would you hear me say, I need you to just say it. Say, Heavenly Father, forgive me all my sins. I invite Jesus into my heart as my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. And because of this belief and confession, I am saved. And he just gave me another chance release a praise right there yeah. I need you to follow the ministers down this aisle turn around tap them on the show to tell them follow you let's go let's go wow everybody else have a seat but release a praise while they walk past you God won again. Oh. God won again. Yay. Shia. Come on, we're leaving. On your way to your seat, look at your neighbor and say, God just won again. On your way to your seat. Everybody have a seat. Have a seat. We got to go. But while y'all were saying that, I heard two words in the spirit. And I just need to release them. I don't know who I'm talking to, but it is the year of expectation. So you might as well get ready. I need you to look at somebody and just say fresh start. Jamon got to preach this 1230, sir. But your hell days are over. And he's about to give you a fresh start. Anybody ready for a new beginning?
five minutes. Have a seat. I got five minutes. I got four minutes. Sit down. Sit down with your fresh start. Your tape measurement just got increased while you were praising God. I want us to get our tithes ready. Come on, get our tithes. Those of us that are tithers, it's a tithing day for me. This is a tithing week for me. Anybody else, it's a tithing week for you. Come on, let's get our tithes ready. I cannot hold back. Now, I need your attention because that's our tithes. But I heard something early and I just want to obey God. Um, everybody that's single, raise your hand. I want you to give into your future. And I want you to call this my future seed. It's a $20 seed. It's a $20 seed. It's your offering. Everybody that's married, raise your hand. If you're married, I'm going to need you to double it up for your house. I'm going to need you, if you can, you're going to sow a $40 seed. It's my future seed. Because the measurement is about to be changed. He's literally about to enlarge your territory. And exceed your expectation. If you don't have the 20 to 40, then you get the best seeds you can. But giving nothing should not be an option. How do you give? You got the QR code. You can text and give. You can go to our app and give. You can give online. If you write a check, just make it out to NLCSE. If you give cash, you put it in an envelope. Put the check in the envelope. When you're at the building, you're going to put it in the deposit box on your way out. Come on, get your seat ready and stand to your feet. Come on, stand to your feet. Fresh start. You're going to meet the right person that's going to erase all the bad memories. Jesus. He's about to give you a fresh start. You're going to end up sending them a thank you card. I'm so glad you left me. Because I didn't have a goal to leave you. But since you've been gone, the right one, the seat has been empty. And God is ready to fill that seat back up again. Come on, you ready? Come on, lift your seat. Those of y'all that are sowing into your future, just start waving your seat. Just start waving your seat. Just start waving your seat. All right, repeat after me. I'm a tithe and a giver. And I am blessed beyond measure. I have more than enough. I'm living in my what? I am living what? How long are you going to live it? Listen, consider yourself this message. Listen to me. On your, all the men, stop for a minute. Every man that's here, I'm going to be in town this week. And I want to talk to us about what is our year going to look like. I want, to, I want us to meet Wednesday at the, at the men's ministry. Meet me here Wednesday at 6.30 so that we can sit down as men. Marriage is Friday in this building at what time? At 7.30. All right? Consider yourself dismissed. I love you. On your way to, out this building, just touch me and say, you have a fresh start. It's about to be a fresh start in your house, in your marriage, with your kids, with Devin. 